This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and let's continue our discussion of bins and in this tutorial we're going to talk more specifically about bin views and how to create your own custom bin views so that you can see the information that you need to see that's obviously important for your edit. Now, at the end of the day, a lot of people, when they start working with bins, they don't really worry about tailoring that. They just kind of go with the way things are on their default. And to be honest, you might not be getting the most out of your editing experience inside a Media Composer unless you get in and really, like I said, customize things the way that you need them, the way you need to see things, so that if a producer says to you, oh, can you tell me you know, what time code we're at? Boom, you can see that information right away. Oh, what, uh, what tape was this from? Boom, you can see that right away. All this information you want to have literally at the click of a mouse. And in this lesson, when we're done, you're going to have your own custom bin set up so that no matter what the question that's asked you by a producer, you're going to have an answer. You'll also be able to find any footage you need lightning quick. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And once we're in Media Composer, we obviously need a bin to start with. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to head on over to my clips bin. Let's just pick the green clips bin. And I'm just going to import some footage into it here. So I'm just going to right click. I'm going to come to import. I'm going to come to, it doesn't even really matter which one of these files I pick. Let's just pick uh, this one here. This is a relatively long file. That's okay. I'm just going to simply say open. We'll give Media Composer a second here to import this. I probably should have imported this the proper way. This is actually a DVC Pro HD clip that I'm importing into a 1920 by 1080 2398 project. And that's okay. And you'll see that we now have what's considered to be the standard bin view for this project. It gives me a lot of information, things like the name, the duration, the drive, the in and out, the mark in, the mark out, track, start, tape, etc., etc. Now, a lot of people like to leave things just like this and start working. To be honest, this isn't how you want to start working inside of your bins and media composer. You really want to get in and customize this view to how you want to work. Now the easiest way to start to customize the bin is to say, okay, well, you know what? I really don't need to see the drive information for this clip right here at the start. I'm just going to move this column right over here to the far right. Maybe I want to see the start time code all the way over here at the beginning, just like such. Maybe we can follow that by the duration. And I think everything else is fine the way that it is. Now, of course, what's going to happen is when I bring the clip up here into the preview window, I'm just going to mark an in and out point here just so that you can see that you'll see that as soon as I mark the in point, that information is immediately populated in the bin. And again, on the flip side, this is why I wanted to show this. As soon as I hit the out point, you'll see that that information is now populated and the in out duration is added into the in out column. Now, this is all fine and good, but the only question that comes into play is, is this information that you really need to see? Let's create a standard custom view inside this bin that's one that you're going to be going to sort of all the time. It's what I call the most basic view. I call it the clips view and it's it's sort of a standard view that I have in my bin all the time. Let's create that. Now, much like creating keyboard settings where we need the command palette to get in and help us create our keyboard shortcuts, we do need another command to get in and help us create our bin views. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the fast menu in the lower left hand corner of the bin and I'm simply going to click on it and the command that we want is the choose columns command. I'm going to select choose columns and believe it or not this is all of the different information that we can display at any one time inside of our bin and to be honest that's a lot. Okay. Like I said, we're going to create a standard, what I like to call my clips view inside my bin. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. I'm going to select nothing. Now I could say, okay, and everything's going to disappear. I only have the name of that clip now. Obviously we don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is just head right back to choose columns. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick the start. Now I'm just going to do this sort of in the order that I, that I'm accustomed to, to doing it here. So we're going to go start. We're going to go end and we're going to go duration and we're going to go tape name. Okay. 
Uh, let me come down to tape. Now, of course, depending on whether you were importing, now I'm just assuming for argument's sake that we're digitizing off of tape, but I'm also gonna show you where tape is gonna come into play in just a second. Um, if you didn't happen to be using tape, maybe what you would wanna do instead is you might wanna come up and have Media Composer show you what the source uh, time code information is or the source file or the source path of your clips that you've imported. You can simply choose those right here. What I'm gonna do is simply say, okay, and we now have the name, the start, the end, the duration, and the tape. Now, this is actually the exact layout that I want it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a custom bin view for this. And to do that is very simple. All I'm gonna do is navigate right down here to where it says untitled. I'm simply gonna click on that. I'm gonna say save as. We're gonna call this, appropriately enough, clips. I'm gonna say enter. You're gonna see that clips appears right down here at the bottom of the bin and where it also appears is up here inside of your settings you'll see now that we have a bin view called appropriately enough clips now you know why is this important well let's say you have another editor who has some very cool bin layouts that you want to use inside a media composer if you come back to the bins tab inside the project window if you were to press command and o on the mac control and o on windows that's the command to open a bin but on the flip side of that, if you were to actually come over to the settings tab and press command and O, it's no longer to open a bin, it's now to open a setting. So what you could conceivably do is open somebody else's settings, which will appear in a window that looks exactly like this. You could take their bin views and drag it from their project or from their user settings right into your project, and then you'll have them available to you right away. A very cool way to borrow bin views from editor to editor, especially if you have an editor, you know, let's say you're one of the, uh, you know, let's just say you're a standard editor on a show and you have like a senior editor or you have a, uh, a lot of cases you'll have like a compilation editor who will sit down and just piece everything together before the, before the editors get in and get their hands dirty and really start editing. This is a way that you can combine your views so that you can get the most, you know, most information out of it. Now, let me sort of show you where this is really going to come into play when taking other editors' views, okay? So let's say, and I'm going to give you a hypothetical here. Let me give you a hypothetical situation of, and you know what I think I'm going to do here? I'm just going to delete this clip. And I'm gonna bring in a few clips, okay? I'm going to switch back to my 720p project here. I'm going to right click, I'm gonna say import. I'm just gonna import a whole bunch of clips because I can do this as a fast import. Uh, let's just say okay, let's say go, okay, open. And I'm just going to do a fast import here. You can see everything's gonna rock it in here, okay? Now I've decided that there really is a column that I need more than anything. Well, not necessarily more than anything, but you get what I mean by that. And that column that I need is a time of day. So what most people think is, okay, well, Kev, you need a time of day column for your bin view, no problem. All you gotta do is simply head on back to the fast menu, come up to choose columns, and you think time of day is an option in here, but unfortunately it is not. So what do you do in that case? Well, believe it or not, it's actually very simple. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click at the top of the bin and I'm gonna type in time of day, just like this, okay? Well, believe it or not now, time of day is now its own column inside of my bin. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this, we'll save this as clips and time of day, okay? What I can do now is I can actually come in and populate this with whatever information I might need. Let's just double click. Well, this looks like it's about lunchtime, so we're gonna type in noon, okay? Let's now come to the next clip. We'll just double click. That looks like noon as well, okay? And what I want to do here is see if we just got a couple other ones that aren't necessarily at noon. This one sort of looks like it's at dusk. Okay. And let's see if there's anything else that might be like at night or anything like that. Most of this is during the day and that's okay. Oh, there we go. Perfect. This We'll just call this night. Okay. So we got noon, noon, night, and dusk. Now, this is all fine and good if I've got like six clips in here. But if I got hundreds of clips in here, that's a lot of typing to do. Or what I could actually do is I could simply hold Option on the Mac, Alt on Windows. And as soon as I do that, I click in the empty... Uh, the empty window under time of day, I now have all of the options that I've typed in at my disposal. So for example, if this clip was, you know, let's just say that this clip is noon, I can simply hold option or alt. And I can say this clip is noon. This clip here might be dusk or noon or dusk or dusk or noon. And you could see that by simply holding option or alt and literally clicking all down the row, you can easily get in and populate this column however you want. And of course, I could switch back to the clips view, which will get rid of that column, 
or I could switch back to clips time of day and now I have all that information. And of course, the best part of this, like I just said, is that if you have an editor who, you know, let's say even if it's the assistant who's created all these different columns with all this different information, you can simply take his bin setting right out of his user settings, bring him into yours, and then you'll have access to all this exceptionally important information at the click of a mouse. Now, there is something else that I wanted to show you that's very cool. It doesn't really have anything to do with bins per se, but it's a great trick that I use all the time, okay? And it's really for music. In a lot of cases, you know, we're always using stock music. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna import a music track from Rampant Design Tools here. Let's just go import. I'm just gonna come up to footage. Let's come down to music. I'm just gonna come into, let's come into the streets. So I'm just gonna take, doesn't even matter which one, I'll just take daily grind, okay? I'm just going to say it's in a 2398 project. We'll just say go, and there is my music track, okay? Now, the reason that I always have the tape column, whether I actually use tapes or not, is specifically for music or potentially sound effects. Because inevitably, at the end of the day, if something's going to get deleted by accident, it's going to be the music, or it's going to be the sound effects, or it's going to be something that I could easily batch import. The only problem is, especially with music, you can pop a disc in, you can import that track, but you might have hundreds of CDs of stock music. Where I work, we've probably got like a thousand stock music CDs. And I always need to know which track is the correct one. That's why I always have the tape column. Because what I like to do is let's just assume that this came off disc, I don't know, uh, 1137. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to assign a tape number to here, but you can't actually come in and type in 1137. It just won't let you do it. But there is actually a way to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to clip and I'm simply going to come down to modify. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify the source. We're going to call this, I think I said 1137, so we'll go 1137. I'm going to say OK. Media Composer is going to say, OK, so 1137 is what you want to change the tape name to. I'm going to say yes. It's going to say, are you sure you want to change it because it's got associated media with it. It's going to say, are you really sure? I'm going to say OK. And as soon as I do that, you're going to notice now that that 1137 tape number has been assigned to this clip. So now, even if I was to take this, now I can just simply double click on this. Let me just switch over to the preview window here. I'm just going to call up the waveform so you can see that there's actually audio associated with it. But what I can do is I can actually delete this just like such. We'll say delete. Everything's now offline. But guess what? If I wanted to rebatch import this clip, all I got to do is select it. I can find tape 1137 because I have that tape column here. So like I said, you might simply call this view, you know, audio. You might just have in your uh, in your audio bin that has your music and sound effects. Just one, you know, you might have the name and you might just have, you know, the tape number that you've assigned all these different disc numbers to right here. And all I now need to do is simply batch import this uh, music track, find disc 1137, and I'm all set to go. Okay, so I hope you see how important bin views are inside of Avid Media Composer. They're essential if you want to get the information that you need literally in a matter of clicks as opposed to having to search around oh i'm not sure what this is i'm not sure what that is when a producer or director sits down beside you you want the information that they need to be able to give it to them right away and having the proper bin views will let you do that every time now before i wrap up this lesson i want to thank our sponsor video guys and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code mc101 for five percent off your avid purchase or any other purchase including g technology storage software plugins and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.